So you guys hopped onto an extremely successful franchise. So being the newbies, did you learn anything surprising about the cast or just how the making of Frozen goes? Yes, yeah. uh, all of the above. <laughs> yeah. um, I think especially on, I mean the cast as a whole, I was hoping they'd be really lovely and nice yeah. because I'm such a fan of the first one, but they exceeded my expectations. Like they genuinely just embraced us with like the biggest welcome and uh, I'm forever grateful for that. Um, and then in terms of the making, I, I've i never done voiceover before, so everything was so new to me and exciting and I really, you know, I've watched behind the scenes, but I didn't really know, I didn't know what really goes on until I was in it. And um, yeah, it was, it was surreal. Yeah, I was surprised by how much um, freedom there was and how much sort of movement. I always, in my head, which a lot of times I was like, oh, that's not based on any actual knowledge. That's just like what I made up because I assumed. But I thought like, especially in <clears throat> movies that are this big and trying to yeah. reach this many people, that like every single thing from script on has been like signed off on and then locked in place and that's it. And we've all agreed that this is exactly how we're gonna tell the story. And so to have there be this kind of ebb and flow of like, we're not doing that scene anymore because we watched it and it didn't quite work. So we're like the ability to kind of, um, to kind of be mobile and flexible and change things and make things better and you know, the best idea in the room wins. It was right. really surprising. I was like, oh, I, I really was nervous that I was gonna have to come in, like hit like a bullseye that I'm like, oh, I don't right. know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but they were like, what do you have to bring to this? Mm -hmm. And let's play around and then we'll we'll make it all work. Yeah, I think that's the key is play. Right. Like, it was so playful. I was not expecting it to be that playful. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that was cool. Well, considering it is um, voiceover work, do you spend most time alone? Do you get to work with the cast? No. No, it was a lot. Yeah, we we only met like uh, about a year ago after most of the my recording had been done. I think I maybe went in a couple more times after that. But yeah, we'd never met each other. Oh, um, yeah. I, I think there was one time where they played me what Jonathan had recorded on his side of a scene. But sometimes they haven't recorded their side yet. So you're the first one and you're just kind of hoping that it'll all <laughs> match up. And yeah, yeah I, I actually, I met Jonathan at the premiere. That's the first time, even though our characters have the most sort of um, conversations in the movie. Yeah, I met Adina at the little cast dinner. And yeah. it's, um, oh, wow. yeah, we don't get to work with each other, but can't complain because we get to read opposite Jen and Chris. Yeah. They're the ones that really act with you and, um, and they give you a lot to work with, so. Yeah, they're lovely. Yeah. Lovely human beings, mm -hmm. as well as genius. Right. Um, oh, Rachel, you once said that for your audition for Frozen 2, you sang uh, Wicked Game by Chris Isaac. I did. Now, this is such a big audition. How did you choose the song? So, it's funny because I remember I was flying back from New York. Even getting the audition in the first place was so spontaneous and kind of just like a random occurrence. And um, I, was, I was looking at the they would give you examples of songs that they would suggest, but they said you could sing whatever you wanted. And that's a song, just based on the character description and the monologue, it just came to me. And my sister is a, a musician, and we always cover that song together. And so I feel like, especially knowing that my nerves are gonna be extremely high, singing a song that I've sung multiple times, also I can sing a cappella. it just made sense. Um, and thankfully it worked that Jamie Roberts casting director was like, bring in sheet music for that for the producer session. And I was like, great, didn't have to change my song. So it worked. Awesome. Um, and then Jason, your character, um, writer, somewhat talks to reindeers. Mm -hmm. So if you could speak to any animal. <laughs> he can animal, actually. I can actually. I will, I can understand what they're saying. They can't understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you did have this power though to speak to any type of animal you wanted, what Ooh. animal would you choose? That's a great question. I would say cats, but we all now f know from the movie what they're all saying. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, I mean, this is a. I think I'd probably just say dogs, mainly so I could talk to. That's my a lot. Dogs. You'd be hearing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a lot going on. Yeah. There's a yeah a lot of just like love me, love yeah. me, love yeah. me. I love you. You love me. I think me? you love regret me. that decision. Real I know. Fast. Maybe, yeah, maybe, would. maybe cats would be better conversationalists. There is a lot of controversy surrounding your character. People are guessing that in Frozen Three, that Elsa will be 
will be the girlfriend of Honey Marin. So can you confirm that at all? I can't confirm that. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I don't even know if we are getting to do a Frozen 3. I'm hopeful yeah. that we are. <laughs> um, but it has been, that's been one of my favorite parts actually is just seeing how passionate the fans are. And, um, you know, from Honey Marin and Elsa to Ryder and Kristoff to some of the songs and all the new characters. And it's really fun to, because I'm such a huge fan to see it like on the other side. And it's special. Frozen has become quite the family affair for you guys. Your daughters were um, voice actors, and then your sister co-wrote a song. So I want to know how your house is. Are you like decked out in Frozen gear? Like, who's the biggest fanatic? Um, I mean, yes, we have a lot of Frozen stuff. Right now I have this awesome pair of Elsa's boots that I got from the Japanese branch of, of animation. Um, and they're in our, we have an awards cabinet where we hold, but these boots just make me happy every time I look at them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're sick. Um. <laughs> um, I, I like buying the toys. I like buying the toys. I don't even like when they send them to us. I, I kind of like going to the store and getting them because it's, you know, I grew up buying toys for movies. Yeah. So you guys co-write these songs together. This is could be a good or bad thing that you guys are a married couple. How, do, how is that process like? Do you fight? You know, over the years, it's gotten easier and easier. I would say early in our collaboration, and this is like when we were working on Finding Nemo the Musical that's yeah. down in uh, down in Disney World, we would get competitive. Over the years, we've really gotten rid of that piece mm -hmm. of it. And, and I think our marriage has also really deepened mm -hmm. as our communication has had to get better. Well, the level of acceptance has, has really risen and we accept ourselves we, and we accept each other and we, we give each other appreciation a lot more than we ever used to. And it's just, it actually is kind of heaven to, to just to be writing a song with, with Kristen. Oh, he's gonna get emotional. Oh. <laughs> It's the best, it's the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I learned that you guys actually go through many versions of songs before you actually put it out. So how do you decide what is the final song? It's done, there's no more alterations needed. Well, we're really lucky because we don't have to decide that. <laughs> the audience decides that, and the audience decides that, and the directors are listening. So we get many, many chances to crack this story and crack these songs. Um, the way it works, is very, it's like seven screenings over three years. So that means you've got one version of this show, one script that you're writing a couple songs for, and then you get a lot of feedback. And sometimes the story totally changes and maybe one of those songs gets to the next screening, which is a totally different story and different dialogue. And this happens seven times. So by the end, the songs that are there have been vetted very carefully by a very rigorous process that holds us to the highest standard. No one holds back. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first heard Let It Go, even before watching the movie, it was immediately stuck in my head. I just found myself randomly, even now, breaking out in Let It Go song. Mm -hmm. um, so what one, is one song that just gets stuck in you guys' head? Oh, gosh. You know, um, don't worry. Do, 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 do. Be yeah. happy. Do, yeah. That's a good do, one. Do, do, do. <laughs> 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 You Don't all will be singing it all <laughs> right. after this. I wish I could whistle. I can't whistle. <laughs> well, what about for you? Oh, just yesterday we were watching TV and there were these, um, these like, were they plumbers? What were they? It was some kind of singing ad for, for, um, for plumbers and the, and the guys sang the, so I can't remember it anymore, but, it, but I, I could not stop singing it all. <laughs> so commercials yeah. get you. The commercials. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I can appreciate that. So you are the first female director for a Walt Disney animation feature film mm -hmm. and the first female director to earn um, over $1 billion in gross box office revenue, which is phenomenal. Congratulations. But what does that, all that mean to you? Um, well, I think, I, think um, I hope I'm just part of a great new wave of change that's happening. Um, and, and what's wonderful here is um, we have two more female directors, um, so I'm not the only one. And, um, and I work with an incredible group, group of guys who are really supportive of me in my new role. And so I feel like in a great way, Disney Animation is, is living sort of uh, in, a, in a, a great place uh, in the industry of, of, of 
letting female uh, creative leaders be there. Yeah. So, yeah. I've also learned today that there is so much work that goes <laughs> into this movie. I mean, just even a hand gesture or a facial expression, mm -hmm. there's so much work. Um, so I was wondering, after you guys see the final product in theaters, do you guys ever wish you can tweak something else? <laughs> Yes. I'm yes. All, I, uh, for me, I'm just amazed we actually can yeah, see it on the screen. Yeah. We actually finished it. Uh, we did, yeah. It, it's hard not to watch the yeah. movie, though, without seeing all the individual artists yeah. and what they contributed all along the way. And Although I, I have to give a shout out to Steve Goldberg because there are a couple shots in Frozen 1 that really, he's our, out of his effects soup that, got, that kept us both up at night afterwards going, oh! And this time we kept testing each other. Is this a shot that's going to keep you up at night? Because we're going to fix it. And um, so he, he was right there with us. There were a couple of times we just looked back at him. He'd be like, we got to change it. I hear you. I hear you. So uh, I think Frozen 2, I have fewer than Frozen 1. Now, Frozen 2 answered a lot of questions that viewers had from Frozen. But there's still so many <laughs> questions. And it's not confirmed if there's a Frozen 3 or 4. But how do you guys decide when you'll answer? Do you just tackle it one movie at a time? or? Is there already an outline? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one was, it was one movie at a time. We definitely, we didn't even think about a second one until about a year after the first one had come out. And um, that's when we were getting the questions about why does Elsa have powers, and we were hearing that from a lot of people. We were starting to ask the same questions. Um, so did we, we looked at Frozen 1 and Frozen 2 as kind of one story. So beyond that, who knows? You can ask us in a year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also, from the behind-the-scenes footage, we learned that just giving the characters names is also quite the process. <laughs> um, so I just want to know what inspires the names of the characters. Yeah, oh. yeah we do a balance of... Um, sometimes it's uh, inspiration from the region that it, that it inspired us, so Scandinavian names and things, but um, often what, what they mean deep down that signals something about the character. Um, and uh, But it... And I know, like, like the salamander Bruni is, is, it means fire in Old Norse. So, like, there are things like that. But we have a lot of fun. It's also sound names against each other, which is important. Um, that uh, you, you, if you have too many O names, you can't keep them. You know, it, it's not. It's funny. It's not scientific, but it is um, a, a long process. You're right. And I'm assuming if you work in animation, you've got to love animation and cartoons. So just what were your favorite cartoons you were watching growing up? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, uh, we, ca we kind of know everybody's favorites here. Mine was Pinocchio. It was okay. the first film that I saw in, in theaters. Mm -hmm. Loved it from the beginning and still do. I think it's one of my favorite animated movies and just watched animation for my whole life and cartoons on TV and always been in that world. Yeah. So. On Cinderella, but then I think I also probably watch Little Mermaid almost as much. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Certainly, Sar Saturday morning cartoons are a big <laughs> part of growing up, uh, but for me, the first movie um, was uh, Bambi, and yeah. And how are you guys feeling about this new wave, these live action films? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it? Well, I mean, it's kind of flattering in a way because um, it, it says something um, wonderful about the classic storytelling that we tell. Uh, I think they are striving to do something completely different, which I can respect too. Um, animation, to me, are, are you? I say, are you striving for reality? Or try, are you striving to transcend reality? And animation transcends reality, and um, I love that about it. It's why we're in animation. But um, but but tr now with technology, they're able to create something that feels like the real world um, is uh, is really fun too. 